The Sweet and Sassy Templates is a series of rhombus templates developed by Phyllis Anderson, which allows you to cut, in this case, diamonds that are in three different sizes. The first template is very small, and if you cut that out, you can place it right here, and that will be the size of your diamonds. They get progressively larger. Here's the second size, and here is the third size. With each of these diamonds, there is a quarter of an inch gripper around the entire outside edge of the rulers, and there are holes drilled in the, in the ruler so that when you need to mark your seam allowance to butt this one to the adjoining fabric, you can mark through the holes and your seams will line up accurately. To use these templates, in this case, we took the second template and we cut out all of our diamonds. So it is a great way to do a starburst type quilt and you don't have any set in points. Because if you notice, we cut one template out here, here are two, here's three, and here's four. And by marking the fabric through the holes to mark our seam allowance, we could line everything up so it is sewn exactly. So here, these were cut on a strip, so these are on the straight of grain. These are bias edges. And so we sewed them together, still everything is on the straight of grain, so it was very easy to sew these four units together to create this diamond. When we did this diamond, we did a set of eight because this is a 45 degree angle here. And then we sewed all of them together to create this. If you notice right here is one of the pie wedges, here's another one. Here's another one. So there's four per side, a total of eight diamonds create this. Now to finish this, if you notice, there is over a quarter of an inch after these full diamonds are added to the bottom. So you just take a straight edge, line it up a quarter of an inch away from all of these points and trim off all of these tails. And then on the back of the quilt, there they are trimmed. We just took a half square triangle and added it to the corner to give us the completed look. In the quilt on the table, we did the same thing, except this time there are more segments. There are eight color segments, and then it took three natural segments at the bottom to make the starburst float. So all of these were strip pieced and then the units were added together. It was very easy to match the points here because we marked through the holes on the template on the wrong side and then just literally pinned them together and everything lined up beautifully. Once we had the quilt to this point, we put a straight edge a quarter of an inch away from these points down here and trimmed it so we had a square bottom. Then the quilt on the table is an example of taking eight of these segments just like we did before, placing them together to make the starburst effect. There are no set in triangles because we took the diamonds, ran them clear out to the side, straightened the edge, and added half square triangles in the corner. And that made our square without having to do any inset points. If you notice on this quilt, taking the smaller diamond and piecing those together gave a very interesting border effect and it added interest to the center of each side of the border in this quilt. Your other option with this ruler is to sew two units together. So we sew two strips together and cut out the large diamond. All we did was place this over top of the diamond right here, lining the center line up with the seam line and cut the diamond shape. Then we put two of those next to each other, alternating the fabrics, and pinned and marked through the hole right here. So we were reversing it, but we can tell on that angled seam exactly where we have to sew across there. So we sewed a quarter of an inch here, and when we flipped it out, we ended up with this unit. Then we put the diamond on here again, lining up the black lines here and the black lines across. And when we cut out that diamond, we have the perfect shape that we can incorporate into our project. Then we have these two little scraps left over. Those two little scraps, again, we sewed together to make this unit. And then we took the smaller diamond, with this is the number two shape, by placing those together, and so the black lines were over the seams, we could cut it out again and sew out of 
one set of strips, we got a large unit and a small unit so we could make two different quilts. We can use this and substitute it in any of our designs where we are using this diamond shape. We can take this one and substitute it into any quilt where we're using the larger diamond shape. And in this particular case, we can do it with this and we can mix it with solids. This is so much bigger so that you get a lot more bang for your buck and the quilt goes much faster. This is the PA2 uh, by Creative Grids. The PA1 is the same thing except the angles are a little different. And uh, so it is a rhombus shape. Opposite triangles are the same angle and opposite sides are the same width. So that's the definition of a rhombus. In this case, these points are sharper. In the rhombus one, they're a little different angle, but you can combine the angles, three of these and three of the, uh, the rhombus one, and it will still make a complete 360 degree center.